All right, guys, so I think tonight's gonna get a little bit crazy. <laughs> I'm here to cover all the pages for all the inpatients for internal medicine. I'm not even joking. I'm Siobhan, an internal medicine and rheumatology specialist. And today I'm bringing you along for my first call shift since I finished residency. My first shift as a staff physician. It's probably about like 150 patients. And then luckily there are residents on call as well at the hospital tonight. So they're in the emergency department seeing new patients being admitted. But I see all the patients already on the ward, anything that comes up. Oh, hi. Yes, this is Siobhan calling. I'm the nocturnist tonight. I just wanted to confirm that I am carrying all the pagers. Um, so can you forward them all to the nocturnist pager? Perfect. All right, yeah, thank you. <laughs> okay, bye. She just said good luck. <laughs> Bad sign. And even though I'm staff now, it looks like it's still the same lovely call rooms. All right, already got five pages. So I feel like there's gonna be lots of little issues tonight rather than any big ones, but maybe I'm jinxing myself, I don't know. A patient with a fever, patient with low urine output, um, another one whose Foley catheter is blocked, uh, one who's confused. So I'm gonna go up and tackle each one. It's just after nine o'clock. I've already had 15 pages. I am swamped. Um, there's a very agitated, confused older man and I spoke with their family for a long time because um, they were so concerned. But now I've got seven patients waiting, so I'm trying to start at the top of the hospital and work my way down to the emergency department to see everybody. This is gonna be, it's gonna be tough. I hope I don't get paged again. Wow, so this just felt like a blur of pages. It's like a flurry, a frenzy, <laughs> where I think the toughest part is not what to do because I sort of knew what to do with each patient. It was more find the time to write the notes and be efficient moving from one patient to the next because there was just so many patients to see. <laughs> a different challenge than seeing consults in the emergency department or seeing the really sick patients in the ICU, for instance. This is more of like a volume game and so it's a different strategy. I've gotta wash my hands, one sec. Okay, now I finally get to actually have a little time, sit down, have dinner. Ugh. I feel really happy that I'm doing this at a hospital that I know, I feel comfortable, I run into nurses that I know, but at the same time, it sort of feels like nothing has changed. Like I'm literally wearing the same scrub, walking in the same hallways. I think the only thing that's changed is like the staff badge, <laughs> the lanyard and the badge that now says staff. But really inside, I still feel like a resident and I don't know how long it's gonna take before I feel different. It's interesting. I don't know. <laughs> oh, hi, this is Siobhan. I'm the nocturnist covering <clears throat> internal medicine tonight. Okay, and did you repeat that blood pressure? Yep, I will come up and see him. Thanks very much. Okay, bye. Okay, so that was a nurse who was paging me about a patient who has a very high blood pressure. I mean very high systolic blood pressure in the 190s. So at this point, I like to just learn a little bit about the patient before I go and see them, as long as they're stable enough to wait a couple of minutes. Okay, this changes things. So he was actually admitted with a brain bleed, what's called a subarachnoid hemorrhage. That makes me a lot more worried about this high blood pressure for a couple of reasons. A subarachnoid hemorrhage is an arterial bleed in the space between the brain and the skull. The classic symptom is a thunderclap headache, a headache that suddenly develops and feels like the worst headache you can imagine. People can also develop a stiff neck, vomiting, or even a seizure. Most of the time, it's caused by a head injury, but rarely it can happen spontaneously with no warning, which is what happened to our patient. More urgent than I thought. We need to go and see him now. So when the patient first got to the hospital, uh, they were assessed by neurosurgery and they said that surgery wasn't needed. We were just going to monitor the patient. 
the monitoring for moments like this, when it looks like things might be getting worse. Walking into the room, I see a man sitting up in bed, leaning over a basin and retching. He looks up at me briefly and just groans. I rechecked his vitals. His blood pressure is still very high, and I noticed that his heart rate is actually quite low. It's in the 40s. Thanks for calling me back. Yeah, I'm looking to get uh, a stat CT head overnight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Looking to rule out increased intracranial pressure. The radiologist just called. The CT scan shows the bleed has gotten even bigger, and there are signs of increased intracranial pressure. The only thing I can do at this point is control his blood pressure to try to slow down the bleed. But there's no medication that can fix this situation. He needs to be seen by neurosurgery. Great news. I just spoke to neurosurgery and they've agreed to transfer the patient to their center so they can actually intervene and decrease the pressure in his brain. We'll just keep an eye on him until we can actually get transport and get things moving. So it always takes longer than you expect, longer than the TV shows, that's for sure. Okay, now an elderly patient with chest pain. I walked into the room and saw an elderly man who was sweating profusely with his hand clutching his chest. It looked like he was straight out of the medical textbook. I ordered a STAT ECG, which confirmed he's having a heart attack. I quickly ordered aspirin, ticagrelor, and heparin, three medications that can help prevent the blockage from getting bigger. Then some morphine and nitro spray to help manage his pain. Now the key is getting cardiology involved and arranging for him to be transported to the cardiac cath lab to open up the blockage. Hi, can you please page the cardiology staff on call? Oh yeah, to us all would be great, yeah. Okay, yeah, I'll call the family. Thank you. Yeah, I'll keep you updated. Thanks, bye. What a dramatic end to the night. I mean, a severe heart attack, 5.30 in the morning. Was not expecting that. Um, I was kind of kicking into gear. How do we transfer this patient, get them the best possible care? Um, and then as I started reading their chart more, I started realizing that this is not what the patient wanted. So I talked to the family. The patient has severe dementia and made their wishes really clear. Everyone was on the same page that at this point it's about quality of life and not more interventions. So, you know, it feels like the right thing and it's so nice to see a family who's talked about this stuff in advance. It makes it a lot easier. So, okay. Now we just need to go write a couple more notes. <laughs> All right, and that is a wrap on my first shift as a staff physician. <laughs> I think I started saying it more and so now I'm, I'm starting to believe it. But you'll see, sadly, the bed did not get used at all. It didn't get any sleep. And I'm sure I'm gonna seriously crash very soon. <laughs> so I just wanna say thanks for joining me. And I just think this is gonna be such an exciting time now, learning what it's like to be a staff physician and, and trying out different locums and different experiences at different hospitals. So be sure to subscribe and that way I'll see you in the next video. So bye for now.